Hi guys and welcome to another Isle of Man related video. I figured it's been quite a while since I've done one of these. You know, the whole move to the Isle of Man and live on the Isle of Man sort of series. So it's about time I go out and record something. And do it outside before the weather turns to not so nice for the winter. So here we are and this video is not going to be quite as cheerful as some of my others. If you watch my other videos you will, you will know that I'm a you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Isle of Man, I've, I've promoted it, advertised it and you know, been an advocate for, for moving here and highlighting all the good bits about it. But I think in the interest of fairness we also need to look at a few of the things that aren't so great. And because I'm a private individual, I don't work for the government. I mean, I am a Douglas City Councillor and I'm sitting in Douglas, uh, the Sunken Gardens here at the Promenade. But I'm still an individual, I can you know, pretty much say what I want in my videos. And because of that, I can try and give you a balanced view. I probably should have done that a little earlier, but you know, better late than never. So this video is about some of the things that maybe aren't so great about living in the Isle of Man and working here and, you know, moving here. And I think it's important that you, you know, take everything on board, the good bits that I said in the other videos and also the not so good bits that I'm about to go through here. But before I jump into that, I just wanted to quickly say thank you for all the comments and uh, messages and all the feedback that I received on all my videos. Um, apparently, a few people have actually moved to the Isle of Man purely because of my videos, which is a scary thought, but thank you for putting your trust in me. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that it helps you guys keep the questions coming, keep the comments going. I still owe you a few other videos. I promise I'm going to try and do them all, you know, one on driving, one on education, which um, I'm not 100% familiar with the ins and outs of the education system here, so I'm researching that at the moment, trying to get a few people in who can give me the right info, so you get the right impression. But I promise I will deliver them. Of course, I will also do uh, a lot more TT and Max Grand Prix and whatnot content over the year, so keep an eye on my channel. And yeah, so thanks for, for all the feedback so far. Keep it coming, guys. It, it honestly means a lot to me, and it's, you know, it's great to hear that, that this is useful for you. So, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the few things that are not so great about the Isle of Man. I don't really have a script prepared, I had a few bullet points, but it's just, you know, sort of from experience. Point number one, the Isle of Man is a small island. And while I have highlighted in previous videos that this can be a great thing because we have a feeling of community over here and it's all, you know, it's not as anonymous as a big city, this can also play against you and this can play against you in a number of ways. Number one is it's small so once you move here it's all going to be exciting and you're going to be driving around and, and discovering and exploring but trust me it's going to take two or three months and you will have been to all the towns tried most of the cafes uh, probably tried most of the restaurants that are worth going to seeing the sights and then you are basically on a small island so be aware of that it's a small place uh, there's only one city and that is of course Douglas uh, before the Queen died recently she made Douglas a city as part of the um, Platinum Jubilee but other than that all we have are small towns and you will have quite quickly explored them and seen them so you know it's not it's not a big place um, one lap of the TT course which is pretty much a lap all around the island is 37 and three quarters of a mile as I'm sure you know now there are more bits both sides but yeah it's it takes about an hour to go around it once so that gives you an idea of you know how small it is so geographically it is small then it's also small in regards to uh, people and with that I mean if you happen to mess up in your life for whatever reason and you find yourself arrested and in court then your name and your address and that's your full name and your full address will be in the paper and very often it will be on the front page if you've been I don't know unruly in the pub or something then yeah you may find yourself you know in the paper your full name and address which personally I find utterly unacceptable and if you are from uh, for example if you're from Germany back in Germany this is not allowed uh, it makes a complete mockery of any any privacy concerns that we pretend to have over here if you know if they can do that in Germany you're only allowed to put the first name and the first letter of the last name and certainly not the address into a paper before or after a court case it does not matter uh, privacy is there so that the newspaper and the media over here still continue to do this they could just stop doing it um, but they don't they you know they seem to take great pleasure in doing it for some very weird reason 
and yeah that's something that is not great so keep that in mind this also plays into the fact that the isle of man has a well a tight-knit community like i said before but it also has a very good collective memory and with that i mean if you do something naughty over here then people will never forget it uh, just ask the numerous politicians and ex-politicians who did something wrong minor or bigger or very often minor 10 20 30 40 years ago and the stories are still being circulated in pubs today you will not live it down if you screw up over here you just will not also because it is small it can of course be challenging when it comes to things like your job so if you come over here in a very specialized position and things don't work out then you may find it difficult to find another job in the same field because it is a very limited and a very small economy uh, the number of unemployed over here is very low it's measured in the hundreds i think it's about 200 so one percent zero point something percent so it's it's not really you know that many but you may find you know issues uh finding a new job if you are in a very specialized field when you move here there aren't many or any really manufacturing jobs here uh, there's a lot in corporate service providers of course there's a lot of e-gaming which is my career um, there are a lot of accounting jobs so if you're an accountant congratulations you're not going to have any problems finding jobs here but you know some other jobs it, it may be difficult to find a position if you're here and things or if you move here and things don't work out just be aware of that have an eye on the you know on your plan b's kind of thing also it's not getting cheaper to live here cost of living is uh the crisis is here to to be blunt with you it's getting incredibly expensive to live here um in all relations from utilities which are pretty much monopolies so, so we have the mua which is the Manx utilities authority which is government owned uh, used to be called the mea Manx electricity authority i'm not a do electricity and water and whatnot uh, they are government owned it's a monopoly so there's only one electricity provider and there is only one gas provider which is manx gas and they just have rebranded to I think island energy or something basically if there was an award for the most disliked company on the isle of man then i think manx gas has a very good chance of winning that uh, for many years in a row because it costs so much to heat your place here and i'm really worried about the winter coming up now uh, gas prices as you all know have exploded they have exploded here too the only thing the Ottoman government has done so far is they have frozen the electricity price until uh, early next year, until March, I believe. So that was a good step. It's still bloody expensive. And yeah, with gas, you just, you know, if you move over here, one thing you really need to make sure is check what your, the apartment or the house that you're moving to or that you're buying uh, is fitted with. If it's with, fitted with gas, then make sure it's a pretty new condenser type boiler or, you know, one of the super efficient ones. And that it's well serviced because it will make an absolutely massive difference in your heating bill also make sure you know the the double glazing is fine and all that kind of thing because it does get cold here and it does get windy here so my next point is straight away then that the weather here can be a bit mixed and in summer as you can see we're in late summer now it's september it's beautiful but in winter it can get really cold really wet and really windy and all of that a lot at the same time so just be aware that it's not always as sunny and nice as you often see it in my videos or when you watch tt or you know videos online or something like that it can get quite uncomfortable here and if you're stuck here in the winter with bad weather and you have to heat a lot because it's always windy then you know that can be um, a bit of a, a damper especially if you come from say sunnier countries um, as you know I've, i used to live in manila i still have a place there if you live there it's always sunny you only need t-shirts well if you move over here um, you need more than a t-shirt that's for sure so just be aware that you know it can get quite cold and wet and windy well it's always windy but it can get cold and wet in the winter uh, snow isn't really an issue it does snow here once in a while usually it's a couple of inches life comes to a standstill because people aren't used to it nobody has winter tires uh, there's every I don't know 10 20 years or so we get like a freak snowfall then really everything comes to a standstill but other than that you don't really have to worry about snow the other thing that is also um, a not so good point about the island is of course the fact that it is an island and that adds another hop another loop another step to any journey that you make off the island so prime example summertime you want to fly on holiday with your family say you're two adults and two kids if you live in the UK, if you live in Birmingham or Liverpool or Manchester, 
you hop in your car or a cab, you go to the airport, hop on EasyJet, off you go, done. If you want to do the same thing over here, you first of all have to get to the UK because there are no direct flights to anywhere else but the UK and Ireland from over here. There is the occasional charter flight that travel agencies put on, but I think one of the agencies that used to do them just went out of business. So it's very rare that you get direct flights to anywhere like Spain or anywhere that's not UK or Ireland from over here. So you always have that extra step. And that of course means you have um, extra time. So you're losing, in most cases, you will lose half a day or a day. So it's an extra holiday that you have to calculate in for travel. Uh, it's of course an extra opportunity for delays and cancellations, which happened a lot over here in recent times. It's kind of getting better now, but we had some real issues uh, with the airport. The airport was, um, well, the airport now has new management. There's a new guy who, who just was, who was hired just recently. So maybe he can get it back in ship shape, but it was a bit of a dump for many years. It was very badly managed, in my opinion. That's, you know, just in case the previous managers watch this, because uh, at least one of them is very uh, publicity conscious. You may have seen him on BBC in his little airport series or whatever. So he and the previous director, directress, well, I don't know what they did down there, but it's, you know, if you look at the place, it was a bit of a dump. It's getting better, but you still have that risk that you have uh, flight delays, um, of course, with weather, with uh, fog, wind, especially in the winter, you know, you get delays. And of course it adds cost as well, it's another flight. So if you are, like I mentioned, a family of you know four and you want to go to Spain, well, that's four more return tickets that you have to book from here to go to wherever you want to go. So it is a lot more expensive. And also depending on when you fly, it can get really, really expensive. If you want to do a short notice hop over to the UK to, I don't know, meet someone, watch a concert or whatever, then if it's very short notice you can look at five or six hundred pounds return for a flight to London so you know try it out yourself uh, go on EasyJet or uh, Logan Air or Flybe I think they are back now and put in a few short term dates from UK to here and you'll see what I mean so be aware of that that you know traveling here always adds another step of course next to flying you can use the boat but in the winter um, so in the summer we have the fast craft which is still going now that's stopping I think at the end of this month because the catamaran, the fast craft that takes two and a half hours from here to Liverpool is not really designed for rough uh, Irish Sea weather in the winter and it does get rough. So you'll be stuck with the Ben McCree, which is the current ferry and there's a new one coming next year, the Manxman, uh, which is a custom built, beautiful machine, um, hybrid ferry. So it's actually environmentally friendly because the Ben McCree is the big boat that goes here back and forth now, has done for 20 odd years. Uh, she runs on well, crude oil more or less. Um, but she's very reliable, but not exactly pleasant if you're on her in the winter and it takes about four hours from here to Haitian. So if you're not good with your sea legs, that can be a challenge. Personally, I used to love, uh, I used to work for the steam packets when I first came here and I loved it. The rougher the sea, the more fun it is. But just be aware that, you know, you have this extra step to get off the island and especially in winter, that can be a little bit challenging. The next thing is shopping. So as I think I highlighted in previous uh, videos, we don't have all the big UK high street chains here. Now some of them have gone bust anyway and they left gaps in our high street as well here in Douglas. Douglas is of course the, the capital city. Uh, the biggest shopping area is here. It's called Strand Street. It's right, right behind me here. Um, yeah, a lot of the shops are uh, empty now because of UK high street chains that have gone pop. It's kind of recovering a little bit, but do not expect this to be the same shopping paradise as you would see in a, in a bigger city. Now, the Isle of Man is kind of, you know, a, a small or medium British town, if you think about it, 85,000 people. But this is a whole island, so there's just not the scale here to bring all these chains over. Now, we do have Tesco, we do have Marks & Spencer, um, we do have ShopRite who sell, uh, what's it called, Sainsbury's range, they stock. So you get those, but you don't get a lot of the other stuff. There's no Asta, there's no Isles Land, no Aldi, no Lidl, and a lot of the other um, you know, grocery chains and high street chains aren't here. There's also no Burger King. We do have a McDonald's, we do have a brand new KFC. So I'm sure you've seen the video on my channel about the huge queue that ensued when they opened it. Uh, they broke all records in the UK for it, the, among KFCs, like in takings. Uh, we do have Starbucks. Again, we have a new drive through one now, so you know, you're not completely alienated. We have more costas than you can shake a stick at. There seems to be one in every corner. 
So you get your, your basic fixes, but don't expect the whole sort of Trafford Center experience when you come over here. Uh, it's quite limited in terms of shopping. We have uh, some little mall, it's called Strand, Strand Center, Strand in, in Strand Street. It's tiny, so it's, you know, it's not the same as like an Arndale Center or something. And we have Tinwald Mills, which is out of town, which is a bit of a sort of posh department story kind of thing, um, which is, it's like our John Lewis if you want. And that's quite nice if you feel posh, you can go there, but other than that, just use the internet. With that, of course, as I also mentioned in the previous video, there can be issues on the internet when you order stuff that either some sellers on Amazon or eBay or sites like that uh, either don't deliver here or when they deliver, they uh, class it as offshore and to charge you an arm and a leg. That is getting better or has been getting better. But if you want to try it out before you move here, uh, hop on Amazon, stick in an IM1 or IM2 postcode. So pretend to be here and see you know, what it says that shipped to my location. Just so you're not disappointed that you can't get whatever it is you, you buy all the time when you move here. The next thing that can be not so great at times is healthcare. Now I know I did say in a previous video that yes, if you want to or need to see a doctor over here, you still can. And I stand by that, but by and large, that is still possible. At least, you know, I have never really had many problems. I've been with my GP since I came here 22 years ago. And, you know, if I, if I need an urgent appointment, usually if I phone in the morning, I can still be seen in the same day. Uh, that may be different in, in other GP practices, but maybe I'm just lucky with mine. If you move here, you will still be given a GP. Uh, you will still be have a doctor and uh, the NHS over here is called Manx Care. So it is basically the NHS with a, with a different name. So it's free at the, at the point of consumption, just as it is in the UK, but also just as it is in the UK, there are huge waiting lists. There are problems, there are issues, there are, um, you know, the A&E in Nobles Hospital, which is our biggest hospital here, the only big hospital we have. Uh, they have already said, you know, don't go there with minor injuries because you will wait. Maybe not as extreme yet, hopefully not yet, but yet as in the UK. So we don't have ambulances queuing outside a &E, not that I've seen. But yeah, do expect to wait if you have a minor injury, do expect it to be busy, short-staffed. Uh, there were all sorts of problems with, with Manx Care here. There was a big inquiry recently. Just, you know, Google Manx Care Isle of Man problems or bullying or any of those keywords and you will see that it's not all roses up there. So expect there to be, you know, some, some problems. Also, if you do go private, then make sure that your private healthcare provider can actually offer you treatment over here because it is usually quite limited. So if you would Bupa or AXA or something, uh, make sure what they actually offer over here because many times they will send you to the UK for treatment because they don't have any partners here. And I believe the private wing in the hospital still isn't open. So your, your benefits of going private are probably a little limited at times here. So check that before you move here. A quick word about money and banking. Of course, we have uh, our own currency, the Manx Pound. It's the same as Pound Sterling. It just doesn't say Sterling on it. So when you uh, come here, you can uh, spend your British pounds, no problem. When you go off island, make sure you only take British pounds with you because UK shops will not accept your Manx Pounds. Uh, but these days, most people pay uh, with card anyway, so it's not that big of an issue. If you do need Manx, uh, sorry, if you do need UK pounds, uh, the cash machines at the sea terminal and at the airports, they only dispense UK pounds. So if you're on the way to go off island, get your cash from there. So you don't get caught out standing in a shop in the UK trying to buy an ice cream and they look at you like you're from a different planet. Banking over here is probably a little more limited than it is in the UK or elsewhere. Uh, we do have a few banks or all the major banks here. There's Lloyd's, there's Isle of Man Bank, which is owned by NatWest, I think, or something. Um, so yeah, there are your, your main banks, but it is not the same as banking in the UK. So you may have issues, for example, moving a mortgage over here, or uh, a prime example is credit cards. It is very difficult for banks residents to get any credit cards these days because UK companies do generally not service the Isle of Man. There's a different jurisdiction, there's a different set of laws here. And I'll let you in on a little secret that if you do have uh, UK credit cards and you move here or you live here with a UK credit card and you are naughty and don't pay it, then there is heartily little those UK credit card companies can do to you. Now, I'm not saying you should do that, but you know, just maybe you read up the regulations and you will find that any of those debt agencies from the UK, they can't really touch you over here. 
um, or at least they never used to. So maybe that's one of the reasons why UK banks don't offer their cards here because they simply cannot use the same kind of bailiff system. We don't have bailiffs, we have, um, we have a coroner, which is kind of the same. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a different system. So you will have problems if you live here to get a credit card, for example. There's a couple of local ones, I think HSBC and a couple of others may, may do it. But it can be a bit of a struggle. The same goes with things like uh, your digital banking, your N26 and whatnot. You may find problems there. So make sure they you know, accept you if you live here. With, or if you give an uh, Isle of Man address when you sign up with them. Another thing that may be relevant is if you are into um, the alternative lifestyle and things like that, then of course, again, it is a very small island. So if you, you know, move around on FetLife or Grinder or any, any sites uh, where you get your entertainment, then yeah, it's a small place. So, you know, you don't get the choice and the excitement that you will get in bigger city in the UK of course you can always hop on the ferry and go to the UK and you know do that there the same also goes for a lot of entertainment so we do get some concerts and artists coming over and comedians and whatnot and we have an absolute beautiful theater the Gayfu theater which is one of the most beautiful Victorian theaters still in existence it's absolutely stunning but we tend not to get the really big uh, gigs coming over here unless someone really spends crazy money and brings them over so during this year's TT of course we had the 1886 guys here at the corner uh, the owner just got his checkbook out and brought a lot of the biggest artists over that he could find including Jesse J was here so that was really cool but it's rare getting big names over here is a big financial risk for the, uh, the producer and they hardly ever do it so be aware that if you want to see say Iron Maiden or something when they're touring the UK again you will have to go to the UK and which again is you know another trip and cost and time and whatnot but there is a good local entertainment scene um, in terms of nightlife again it is probably not as exciting and varied as you are used to if you come from a bigger place so keep in mind this is a small and tranquil island there's a bit of nightlife, uh, there's 1886, they sort of cocktail bar club, um, I think the Outback still open and a few others. When I first came here in 2000, the whole promenade was basically one big piss up every weekend and it was a very different vibe. But this was in pre-Facebook times, this was in pre-super expensive alcohol times. And it's a different world and people, you know, go out in a different way. So yeah, the nightlife here is, it's probably okay. I haven't been out in a while, so I'm probably not an expert on this, but it's not the same as if you're in Liverpool or Manchester or something like that. In terms of food, however, it's actually pretty okay. It has come a long way in the last 20 years because the Isle of Man has become a much more mixed and colorful and international place with all these uh, gaming companies and finance companies coming over here and bringing their staff from all over the world. You get, you know, pretty much any food that you want. Again, not as many varieties as you would get in a, in a city in the UK, in a big city. But I think it's pretty decent these days. So, you know, if you want your Chinese food, uh, Thai food, we have some really good ones, really good Indians. Uh, Orange India is really good here in Strand Street. Um, yeah, there's plenty of variety now and it's getting more and more. And I think you'll be, you'll be fine. Of course, our national dish, chips, cheese and gravy can be had from pretty much every chip shop and you have to find your own favorite for that one but yeah generally on the, on the food side it's okay food shopping as well we have a couple of specialist shops again probably not as much choice as you get in the UK but it's getting better there's a new Asian supermarket down here as well if you need anything there's a Bulgarian shop a Filipino shop and there's Robinson's who also stock a lot of international stuff so it's not too bad it's not the same level as you know London or Manchester but it's not too bad and maybe finally we should have a look at the whole issue of uh, let's call it racism discrimination that kind of thing it's a problem in the same way that it is a problem everywhere because you get idiots everywhere and you get racists everywhere but to be honest i think we're actually doing pretty okay here on that you now some people will prove me wrong and put it in the comments because you know i am a white european so i may not have the most uh, accurate personal experience when it comes to this but it does feel as if the island has become 
a much more colorful and tolerant and nicer place over the last 20 years. As you may know, the Isle of Man has been a little bit behind when it comes to certain laws. Uh, it was still illegal, technically, to be gay here until, was it 93, I think, somewhere like that. Um, the birch was still being used to beat people until about 20 years before that, 70s or early 80s, until some European human rights case uh, stopped it. So we tend to be a little behind in some things. Having said that, when the Pride Parade was on recently in the Pride Festival, they had a big parade here along the, the promenade. I'll put some pictures in. It was an amazing sight. There were many, many, many people. And it has shown me that the island has indeed changed and it is, you know, much more open and colorful. And there are still challenges, of course, to be overcome, like in any place. But yeah, I think we're doing, you know, pretty good in that respect. We're moving in the right direction. It's a, a very colorful and tolerant place. Um, it's maybe not as super vogue as some other places. If you move, I don't know, if you move here from California, you probably think we're even further behind. But I think we're doing quite all right. Uh, people here are generally friendly and yeah any problems or you know sort of racism or whatnot you get well you get those those couple of idiots everywhere the last point i should probably mention and it's actually one of the most important points is uh it is well like i said it's expensive to live here it's getting more expensive but it's also getting harder to actually live here and with that i mean it's getting harder to find somewhere to live uh, in terms of I mean, buying isn't really a problem. The, the market has fine heated up like mad and house prices have exploded here. Where it can be a problem in particular is if you are looking to rent, especially if you want to rent an apartment and you may be on a limited budget, then it can be challenging, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've heard from plenty of people now who've had problems finding somewhere to live. You have to calculate, even for one bed, at least 700 quid, probably nearer to 1,000 pounds now if you want something decent. Uh, like a you know one two bedroom with well dry walls and doors and windows that actually close properly um, so yeah keep in mind it is not cheap to rent something here and the supply seems to be a little limited so you need to do a bit of your homework or you need to get your employer to help you if they are uh, helping you to move here if they bring you over here so just keep an eye on the on the estate agents there's plenty of them just google them they're all pretty much the same and yeah it's it's hard to find somewhere to live here we do have slum landlords as well who have uh, properties in terrible conditions shouldn't happen but does happen and of course we're trying to do things about that but it's not as bad again as the uk but it does happen so yeah just be aware that it's you know it can be a challenge to find somewhere to live and then of course once you live here so if you pay say 900 quid rent for a two-bed apartments then of course you have to calculate in your electricity and your gas on top and that can be very very expensive so you know do really i think that the most important thing i can tell you is do your sums before you decide to move here because once you are here it's not that easy to move away again especially if you, if you bring a lot of stuff and trust me i've done it a few times now so yeah do your sums before you move here on balance it's still a great place to live despite all the down points that i just told you about i think no place is perfect but this place has a lot to still going for it it's still you know safe and clean and friendly and today it's sunny so that's good and in a world like ours today where there's so much uncertainty and risk and crazy people this is still a very good little citadel to you know a little rock to hide on literally we call it the rock um yeah, and, you know, I, I consider it home now. I like the place. I think I will spend a lot more time here. And of course, I will do more videos as well. But just be, you know, be aware that um, every paradise has also some, some down points to it. So that's, I hope that wasn't too negative. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, do pop them in the comment section or uh, contact me email me whatever I'll, I'll put my details on the bottom um, you know i'm a douglas counselor as well so you can find my contact details on the douglas council website just google it and you will find all our details it's public information no privacy for me there and yeah that's about it so i'm going to try and do more videos again so about tt stuff and also about uh, driving education 
and well whatever else you want it's up to you so put some comments in the bottom what you want me to cover i promise i'll do the education one i'll get around to it i know it's important to a lot of people a lot of people have asked so i'll do that maybe next i'm also still going to post the tt review that i filmed last after tt i just haven't gotten around to it it was a really lengthy thing and it sort of got sidetracked so i'll post that as well uh, so keep an eye on my channel let's stay in touch and that's it for today thanks for watching